This big question now, uh, which I, I often hear, is is cannabis an anti-epileptic treatment? Well, the short answer is no. And why is the short answer no? Is because cannabis is a plant, and we're talking really about, about the, the leaves, and, and these leaves uh, contain hundreds or perhaps thousands of different molecules. We call them cannabinoids. So what's in cannabis? All those different molecules, we call them cannabinoids. And they have different actions. Some of them have no action whatsoever. And depending on the origin of the cannabis, you can find different proportions of, of those compounds, of those molecules. There's been a lot of attention around two of those components. One, let's call it THC, and the other one, CBD. Now, THC has um, a lot, a lot of the effects that are sought when people use cannabis uh, for, as a recreational drug. So uh, they have um, an effect on how the mind works, how you feel at, at the time when THC is uh, in, in your brain. Another one is CBD. CBD does not have those effects uh, on, on your mind, the psychotropic effects as, as we call them um, in neuroscience, but they seem to have an interesting effect um, on epilepsy in some conditions. In Angelman syndrome, you can get difficult to treat epilepsy. Some doctors say refractory epilepsy. Refractory meaning that, that the seizures, that the epilepsy do not respond to treatment or do not respond well to treatment. So we, we keep wanting more drugs, hoping that they would be more effective or that they would be better tolerated, that they would be, uh, have uh, less side effects. And then in that search, almost anything goes. In the last few years, there's been um, a, a lot of interest for drugs um, that were not designed to treat epilepsy. And these drugs, uh, these molecules, can be found in cannabis. We found that in our body, in our brain cells, we have receptors that recognize cannabinoids, that is compounds that can be found in cannabis. Very specific, we didn't know that. So this helped us, first of all, understand how cannabis can have an effect uh, on people's brain, but also uh, helped scientists to design drugs extracted from cannabis. Now, cannabis um, is not a drug in the, in the medical um, sense of the term, because uh, Cannabis is a, is a weed, um, is a plant, and in the leaves you have many different compounds. And one of these compounds, um, at least, is possibly uh, interesting for epilepsy. Recently, as we've been able to um, identify what might be good and, and make it um, in, in laboratories, there have been studies in selected forms of epilepsy and, and some results say, yes, it can be helpful in this epileptic syndrome or that epileptic syndrome. None of those syndromes um, exist in Angelman syndrome. Based on, on those results, um, there will be and there are being trials uh, of CBD in other conditions with epilepsy, both in adults and in children. And it is coming in Angelman syndrome too. But before we really embark on using or on saying CBD is definitely a interesting in Angelman syndrome or not interesting in Angelman syndrome, it's really important that we have studies of safety that is, is it okay for people to take CBD? 
And I say CBD, not, can I, not cannabis, not, not the full thing which might not even contain CBD at all, but CBD, is it safe? Particularly what we don't know, is it safe in, in children? Can, can it have long-term effects? Adverse effects <clears throat> on the brain. Is it tolerable? If people take CBD, is it okay or are they going to feel sick and they're going to be tired and they're going to have this and that adverse effect and is the balance of adverse effects uh, such that it's acceptable to use it as treatment or not and then and it's really our third question it's not our first question is it useful in the treatment of epilepsy and if yes what sort of epilepsy with sort of seizures and also what sort of patients and before we have answers uh, to those questions um, we can't really have an opinion so the only strong opinion I have is it's important to perform the research in a rigorous way is it a good idea if you can get some to try it I don't think it is because we we need to know more I think it's a very good idea to do um, trials. So, uh, and I think that it's a good idea if you're interested um, to see if you can be enrolled in those trials. And you have to know that a, a good trial is a blinded trial. That is, you may receive the drug or you may receive a placebo. That is, not the drug, uh, usually nothing. Uh, for comparison, this is really important and it's, uh, and it's well controlled. We need to be sure uh, how the compound, how the, the drug uh, is made and if there is the, the right quantity and the right quality in, in what you take. So this is probably going to be around um, sometime um, for, for the years to come uh, before we have a clear answer but there's a real hype because cannabidiol which is that compound comes from cannabis and there's a social image of taking drugs of giving drugs uh, many people say it's very wrong to do that other people say why not it's really cool to do that and actually it has nothing to do with being wrong or being cool uh, wh when, you, when you try to think seriously about anti-epileptic treatment. So it is never a good idea to just sort of go out and experiment. Because if you do that, there can really be damage which you cannot anticipate. It's hard as a community because a lot of times we hear people saying to us things like slow down and don't try things. and. I think a lot of community members feel like it's patronizing on some level that they know what they're doing and, and they want you know the best for their children. It is frightening to me. Um, you know there are things that are dietary that we know make sense. There's been research. There's been trials. Things like the ketogenic diet or the low glycemic index treatment for seizures. We know they work, and the data behind them is really fantastic. Things like that I feel like are fantastic for people to try. Things that people think might help. Um, that can be really dangerous because lots of things have interactions that we don't understand. Um, a lot of times people won't tell their physicians what they're doing because they don't want to be chastised. And then you are prescribed medications that end up interacting with something that you've prescribed. Um, I've had parents tell me they want to take their children to other countries and have illegal stem cell injections done and that terrifies me because that's killed people. And I know as families we want better things for our kids, but we should also be safe. And the way to be safe is to participate in trials for something new, listen to the research and the physicians about what does work and what is safe for your child, and uh, you know, try to remain calm. There are things that are coming that are going to help us, but there are things out there right now that may not. 